Welcome back guys, this is Storm, this is going to be another Minecraft command video and in this episode we're going to look at the set block command. So let's take a look at the syntax, it's quite a straightforward command. So here we go, we've got the inputs of x, y and z, tile name, now tile name is going to be the type of block that you want to set, uh, data value, so that's data value for the block that you want to set, this funny looking optional uh, argument called old block handling and then also data tag. So what on earth does all that stuff mean? Okay, so set block basically allows you to set a particular block at a particular location. So it's quite straightforward in what it should do, um, but it's quite powerful in how it can go about doing it. So let's take example here. So we've got an enchanting table. I'm going to destroy that enchanting table. I'll press this button and ta-da, it reappears. So how is that so? So inside here we've got the command set block at this particular location. So these coordinates here is this coordinates right where this block is sitting. And then we've also got the, the um, tile name. This is basically the type of block. So I'm putting in an enchanting table. And then this is the data value, which is just zero. Um, in fact, this is a optional argument. So if you wanted to, you don't even have to define that. It will still work. There you go. Um, but that's not all. You can do other things. So there's that funny looking old block handling. So let's see what happens if we when we define the old block handling. So there's going to be different options you can have for that. So let's write keep. For example, so there's only three types. Keep basically means I'm going to keep a block if there's already a block in that position. So here I'm going to press the button, but nothing happens. That's because there's a block here. If it was an air block, we'll still get the enchanting table. So that's how the keep option can be used. Now destroy is also an interesting one um, because destroy allows the items to be um, basically dropped from the block that was uh, being replaced. So here I've got some lapis blocks. And there we go, we've got some XP and I've got some, there should be some lapis, there we go. Got some lapis out of that. Same will occur for glowstone and of course with um, the quartz as well. So that's the, the different types that you get. Now you can, there is one other which is the default, which is replace. And that is, so you don't even have to type it, but if you wanted to type it, uh, all it does is just replace the block regardless of what's there and you don't get the drops from it. Uh, just like that. Um, but there's many other things you can do. Let's look at some other examples. So let's cruise on down here. Now inside this command block, I've got in here a execute command and I'm going to be doing an execute wherever there's an entity horse, which includes the donkeys. And I'm going to be using the set block to set a hay block beneath the donkey. All right, so let's turn this thing on. Let's see what happens, all right? You're going to come over to me, donkey. Look at that, he's leaving hay all over, <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> Um, so this is one way how you can use set block, which is basically cre creating it a little bit dynamically by using this positional information from the execute command. Um, but yeah, it's quite a straightforward command and it allows um, some decent uh, ways to set blocks uh, dynamically in your world. But we can do better than that. Let's try another option. So let's go and put in another setting here. So we're going to try and use something a little bit more crazy, a little bit more uh, out there in terms of what you can do with this command. Again, we're going to use execute, but basically we're going to be using some information about um, some dynamic objects that's flying in your world. So if you couldn't quite grab the command that I just pasted in, let's take, take another quick look. So we're going to be using snowball detection at a particular location. And then if I detect a snowball in this location, I'm going to be using set block. So let's give this thing a go. So if I throw this anywhere, nothing happens, right? The snowball just goes and it just shoots out. It's all good, but if I shoot it over this particular patch, now get out of here donkey, you're putting hay everywhere. There we go, we've got ourselves a little step that we can make um, just by having this, um, the snowball shooting through over this little patch of uh, this grid just here. So I can keep throwing this and it's going to dynamically create a little platform here, which is just a layer of snow. And then you can create yourself a little pathway um, that's a bit higher. Let's go a bit lower. There we go. I can jump to that. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool. You can create little maps using this, some little game modes, uh, just by throwing uh, snowballs around. And you can just put in a particular location. So you can make it so that it doesn't occur anywhere you throw them, but if you throw them over a particular location, then um, the snowballs will turn into a different block or using the set block. So that's pretty cool. But we can do one more. So let's try this out. Let's look at this command. So inside this command block, what we're going to do is we're going to be using set block to create ourselves a mob spawner. This is not any mob spawner. Let's take a look at 
the output. So here, this one uh, powerful little command block has created ourselves an apple tree. So we've always wanted an apple tree in Minecraft. So let's go check it out. Let's create some inventory room for, for our apples. So I'm going to walk up to the tree and now we've got some apples spewing out of this tree. Um, all it was was that one command was able to create ourselves a mob spawner in here with some different um, properties of that mob spawner, which is allowing us to create uh, these apple drops. Now one in five of these drops is going to be golden apple. I think one flew out the back there for a second. Um, so if we stand here long enough, we should see one of these uh, golden apples fly out as well. Hopefully we can grab one. Um, these items are actually despawning after three seconds, so they don't stay around very long. We've got one in our inventory. We've got another one now. So they are spawning out. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty cool way that you could create something dynamic like that um, just by using a command block and a simple command. So this command itself is a little bit long, but it's quite simple in its context. I will have all the details in the video description if you want to take a copy of this and try it out in your own world. But yeah, it's quite fun and you can create something a little bit different like this, which is, uh, yeah, an apple tree. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. This is the, the command in a nutshell. It's how do you set a particular block with different information. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so if you like these kind of videos, make sure you check the Minecraft command uh, playlist that I have on my channel. Uh, the link will be in the video description, plus also on the screen. So click that if you want to. And hopefully you guys keep enjoying these videos. And until the next one, stay awesome, guys. All right, see you guys. Cheers.